Okay, so good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, whatever it is at this time. Um, and welcome to the Human Computer Interaction course. And if you are not here for the Human Computer Interaction course, you are in the wrong room, obviously. Um, I am Luigi De Russis, and I am the, one of the teachers of this course, together with Fulvio Corno. We will both have with you lectures in class, and I will follow you during the lab hours in addition to, to that. Um, so, briefly, an uh, introduction of the course, and then we will focus a little bit more on the exam and uh, on the structure of the course and the methodology that we are going to use in the course and the uh, entire process that we will ask you to follow during this course for the entire semester starting from now, basically. Hmm? So which is the goal of the course? You already read the, the description of the course, probably, because you selected this course since it's uh, elective. Uh, so the goal is basically this one reported in the slides. So the idea is to understand, to let you understand how to design the user experience of interactive system. Modern interactive system mainly with different devices, environment and so on. And in understanding that, we would like to give you knowledge and practice on a human-centered process that we are going to follow, not only describe during the lectures, but also follow during the entire course and for the exam for an interactive system, a prototype system, not an entire complex ready-to-market system, but for something that is prototypic, prototypical. And obviously, also becoming familiar with methods and technique to do all of these and also learn how to evaluate the system. So not only understand how to build, not only build the actual system, but also evaluating if everything is fine or, or it's problematic, what to change, and so on. So why this course? Um, and this question could also apply to, to the picture, your choice. So this is, uh, joking a little bit, but not too much, this is the, the normal, let's say, aptitude of a developer or an engineer also. That when you have two way listening to user needs or the user is stupid, uh, the user doesn't understand, I am right, and or this technology is very cool, I'm going to use this technology no matter what. Our user is going to, to think about it. Typically, developer turn on, on the right, on the technology street, on the, oh, I'm, I know more, I know better than my user, or I don't care about my user because, oh, yes, this new framework is there, and I would like to, to experiment with it, and why not? Um, and also, this feature is cool, and would like to implement that. Uh, so, this attitude is problematic, at least, and uh, in this course, we would like to teach you that the other way, the way to the, in which this car can go straight, that is listening to user needs, and then derive feature, and then derive requirements, is the right thing, let's say, to, to do, and we will try to convince you that is the right thing, and we'll go, we're going to give you methods and technique to do this effectively. Um, in, in another way of saying, these are two sentences from two different people uh, in, that basically represent the same idea of that picture before. Hmm? The first one say, deep down inside every software developer, there is a budding graphic designer that wait to get out. And if you let that happen, if you let this graphic designer get out from the software engineer, you are in trouble, or at least the user will be. And the other one, and then I will show you an example, a real example of that, of that, this sentence. And the other uh, sentence is from a professor of human-computer interaction in the US uh, that say the two hardest problems in computer science and computer engineer as well are first, people. Second, convincing computer scientists and computer engineers that the hardest problem in computer science slash engineer is people. And third, and three, off by one error. So this is developer aptitude. So let's focus on, on the picture on, 
on this side on the right, this one. This is actually a real application. That of developer, the other one is fictional, so it's an example, but it's fictional. This is a real application. One developer, one day, uh, this developer were using uh, uh, Vuget, mm, the command line tool, thought, why well, you have to remember all the commands for Vuget? Let's put everything in a graphical user interface that's easy to, to use, they're not remembering everything, every option from the command line. I forget the, com the, the various options. So here, I have everything at a glance, everything in front of me. And, and this is the result. It just basically, this person basically get everything from the command line and put it as is, more or less, in a graphical user interface. And this is, let's say, a mess, to be, to be kind. Uh, where do you start here? There are a bunch of buttons. Where, where do you start? You start with start or with uh, pro mode, what app opens, what did pro mode? There is a, a pro mode of that, this is the basic version, really. And, or there is a exit here, in a different level, or you have to, to write here something, in which field, they are all to be filled up. If you fill one field, the other one is not needed. By looking at that, you know. You know, probably, if you know the Vuget common line, but if the user interface is to, to simplify the Vuget command line, that this is surely problematic. Hmm? Uh, so, starting from this idea, going quickly on what we will learn and what we will cover during this course. So, starting from an introduction to the human-computer interaction as a field and as a, a methods and techniques that will, uh, will be today and on Thursday, we will have uh, a great part, one third more or less of the course, devoted to this building interactive application, this prototype that I was mentioning before, with a human-centered process. So the first shift that we are asking you, and this is a preview, is to stop thinking from a feature-oriented process, from a technological-oriented process, but start thinking to a human centered process. People first, let's say, technology later. And we will also force you to do this. We will see in a moment that we will speak about technology after the half of the course. You are, you are not starting coding in, or programming or designing a system tomorrow, but in week six or seven, something like that. Because we start from people before to understand what to do before doing. To do something better in the end, optimistically, ideally. And this will account for more or less one third of the course. Then another third of the course is the application and the projects that you will carry out. And at a certain point, at the end of the course, you will have a prototype of an application or system made with web technologies, but it's at the end of the course. So for the exam, let's say, for the day of the exam. And we also have a bit of a beyond the WIMP paradigm, so all the paradigms that came after the graphical user interface on your desktop computer. So everything that is touch-based, interacting with artificial intelligence system, and so on. So this is the picture, and this picture is more or less split in these 12 weeks of the course, that will be 13. There is a missing week here, but it will be a, a continuation of the 12 plus a simulation of the exam, of the written exam uh, in the last week. So we will start with introduction. We will start on how to get uh, feedback, how to get needs from the user so that we can build something that is useful, used and usable. Um, and it's basically week two and three. Then week four and subsequent weeks is about prototyping. Quick ways to build something that is testable, uh, able to be evaluated by other users, by other experts, by other people, to, to, to understand if you are in the right direction or not. And this is more or less week four up to six. Uh, then seven, eight, nine, and 10 will be uh, about visual design, how to design a graphical user interface, 
best practices and guidelines. Uh, design for diversity, multimodal, and interacting with AI is getting what I called before post WIMP, hmm? above WIMP, beam, behind WIMP, getting outside the screen, mouse, window, and keyboard, and en enriching, hmm? um, embracing other input and output modalities and other actors like artificial intelligence systems. And we will conclude the course with devaluation, how to evaluate what we build up to that point with the user mainly. So, which is the methodology of the course? The methodology is both um, project-based and problem-based. Project-based means that we will ask you now, basically, to create groups, to work in team for the entire semester and do a project. That again, will follow this process that we are going to teach you during the classes. So we, we are going to see something in the class and then you are going to apply a subset of that something in your own work to better understand, to better learn how to do this thing. And also problem-based. Uh, because we are not going to assign you a topic for the project, but the project starts from your own ideas and subsequently from real users' needs. So you, and I will explain this in a while, today, um, hopefully. Hmm? So we are going to do this group work, project work, that start from your ideas, and they will be let's say, evaluated, interacted with us to refine that idea, not to start with something that we already know that is not working, and so it's something that you can improve with us um, during the entire course. And the idea here is also, during the course, uh, we will encourage you to, to speak, to interact, since this is a human-computer interaction course, to do the human-human interaction, in this case, um, the student-teacher's interaction, um, so to, to speak with us. If you have, we, we will create different moments for feedbacks and different moments for communication, and you have the opportunity, if you want, to use them, to improve your project, to, to understand better, and eventually, as a result, also to get a better score at the exam, at the end of the course, which is a consequence of everything. So this project, team-based, and it starts from your ideas, will be developed during the entire semester, mostly during the lab hours. So we, in the lecture, we will give you the idea, the knowledge, the concept, the methodology. We will do some exercise as well, but then in the lab is where the action is. And, and we will have um, three, let's say three, intermediate milestone and deliverables, three checkpoints to say, okay, you are moving in the right direction or you are moving in the wrong direction, so you have still time to go back in the right direction. Because again, the idea is to help you learn how to do this thing more than give you a score in the end. And such deliverable, you will, we, will, we will be asked to submit this deliverable that they are written typically, uh, in English, since the course is in English, um, on GitHub, and that deliverable, those deliverables will not be graded when you submit them. They will be graded at the exam time. So why are we asking you to submit deliverable at a certain moment? Again, for feedback. Hmm? To give you feedback and to tell you, okay, the first deliverable, you are moving in the wrong direction. And this is impacting the next deliverable. So if you do, if you do bad in the first deliverable, then the second one will not be good. So you have still time after um, uh, submitting the first deliverable to get our feedback, to fix the major problem, and to work better towards the next step. And then all these deliverables will be eventually evaluated and graded, but at the exam time, not during the semester. Um, okay. So the organization, you, you already have the, 
you have it on, on the teaching portal and on Slack and uh, everywhere, three hour per week lecture, one hour and a half here, the other one on Thursday in uh, room 8i. Uh, uh, there will be lecture, exercise, mixed sometimes, and they all will be video recorded, like now, hopefully, it's, it's video recorded. Um, instead, the laboratory will be on Thursday, immediately after the class, one hour and a half per week. We have two slots, because in theory, you are more than 100 people enrolled to this course, so we cannot stay in, in the lab together and follow each, each of you uh, in a good way with 100 people. So we have two slots consequent on Thursday starting from this week. So in two days you will have the first lab. Uh, this is not something that we do usually. This is something characteristic for this year because Christmas vacation will, um, will, will, be, will last longer than typically, and so we lose a Thursday and we need to, uh, we lose a lab and we need to, to have that hour in, in the course. So we, we start the, the lab one week before um, with an exercise that we are going to do in any case in the lab also in other years. So two slots starting from week one, week one, mainly again are for group projects. Some of them will be more uh, with some instruction, maybe to get started with a group project on a specific topic, other towards the end of the course will be more like supervised work group in which you work on your project and if you have any problem, any doubts, any whatever, you can ask and receive help in that moment. Uh, the third thing about laboratories is that uh, the slots, you can choose in which slot, uh, for, for this week you can choose in which slot you would like to do, to, to go. In this moment, we have more or less 50, okay, one hour ago, we had 50 people in the first lot and 10 in the second, so if you didn't book the, for the lab, book for the second one or come, came to the second slot for this week. When we will have groups, we will split groups according to your own preferences in the various slots so that if you cannot be in the second one, you will go in the first one and vice versa. And if you have no preferences, you will go in the slot that is empty, more empty than the other, hmm? to, to help you at the best, at least. Um, but this is from when we will have groups and we will tell you clearly uh, everything on Slack. Hmm? That is, as you already know, the, the main way in which we communicate during this course. What else? Oh, yes, the lab, obviously, for what I have said up to now, labs are the most important part of the course, right? You can, in theory, you could skip classes because classes are video recorded. You can watch it later. And they are mostly theoretical plus exercise, but you can, you know, redo the exercise on your own if you want. If you have some issues, one of the hour of the class. But laboratories are really the most fundamental part because, again, is where you actually work for this course, on this course context, and for the exam. So try not to miss lab hours hmm, in general. Uh, well, material. We have a course website. That is that one. That is this one. A little bit smaller. Um, in which we have the schedule, and you will find here the full calendar at a certain point, the full calendar, that is tentative calendar hmm, of the course with uh, links for each lecture and laboratories. Up to now, there are all the lecture of this week plus the laboratories of this Thursday. So everything is online. And for classes, a link to the specific video on YouTube of the classes. Hmm? videos will be on YouTube and on the Portale della Didattica. Both places, you can choose which one you want to, to use and who is in the class in that day, in that specific hour. Hmm? Together with any deadline, vacation, anything that happens, like that one, that is a deadline, it's October 7, first milestone, milestone zero. This again, another preview. And then there is a tab, another important tab is the exam in which you have the rule of the exam written, 
but it's not something that we are not going to discuss today. And uh, the material, the links, the templates for the deliverables, for all the deliverables and the milestone in this course. So everything is in, that, in this page, plus some old, not so old, but the last two years, exams, written exam for this course. So with the solution, with a possible solution of it. So everything is already online and you can freely use and access to that. Hmm? So material, the course website, video lecture for classes only, again, Plus, we, we, have, uh, we have a GitHub organization, that one reporting the slides, in which we will put example, exercise, slides, and labs again as a backup, and where you will also uh, work on your project, deliver your deliverables, hmm? submit your deliverables. Each group will have uh, two, actually, repositories in this organization, private repositories in, the, in this organization, and you will work in this private repository that are private among groups, but we will obviously have access, if needed, to, everybody, to every repository. And that is the way in which you are going to deliver everything, every material to us during the course. Uh, communication. Again, we will use Slack for everything. Don't send us email. We don't love email. We receive too many emails, actually. Uh, so we, we moved to Slack uh, a few years ago, pre-COVID. Um, so we will continue. And if you are not on Slack, and probably you are, some of you are not, because here should be 70 people, and on Slack there are 63, so at least some people who is here shouldn't be on Slack, join the Slack workspace, because here is where you receive everything, all communication about the course, and where you can also ask in any moment uh, any question to us, to other students, Etc. Hmm? Uh, obviously, if you write midnight on Saturday, maybe not expect a, an answer in five minutes, but typically during say Monday to Friday, during the day, we are quite reactive in answering. On Saturday and Sunday, we, we try to, to, to have Saturday and Sunday free time, you know? Um, that thing that once you had, and we also had. Um, but if you want, you can write, we will answer. Maybe not immediately, but uh, in a while, one day of two. During the week, it's easier. Um, OK. Then, office hour. Again, one of these chance to speak with us if you want. And this is especially for people that cannot follow the lecture in person. Um, it's, it's a moment in which it's online, it's on Zoom. Every Monday, 2 p.m., 4 p.m., uh, starting from next Monday, I open this call in this address that will remain the same for the entire semester, and you can jump in in any moment in this call. If you have any question, five minutes, okay, and then you can leave. At any moment, from 2 to, five, to 4 p.m. So if you have a question at 3 p.m., you can connect at 3 p.m. and ask a question and then leave. I will keep this open. To, for, for the entire time. Uh, and if needed, if you prefer, we can also meet in person, but obviously in a different time, not that the tower, and that in that case, if we want to meet in person, uh, and, is, and after the lecture, and after the labs, and during the labs is not enough, send me a direct message on Slack, and we will uh, set up a, a meeting. Then, the exam. The exam for this course is split in two parts. And if something is not clear, just ask, no, no problem. Um, it's split in two parts. We have a written test covering the most theoretical parts, so the things that we are going to do in class, basically, and for which you have some past exams on the course website already with solutions. And this is around 40% of the total score. So 13 points, minimum seven to pass that part. It's a written exam, four open questions, one hour to do the question on paper. And in theory, if the, the, the pandemic goes well, let's say, 
that will be in presence. But in any case, it will be on paper. Also, last year we did it on paper. So nothing changed from that perspective. And then 60% of the grade, so 20 points out of 30 plus uh, lode, will be for the project evaluation. So for the work that you start to do during the semester. And this means the deliverables that you, you submit during the semester, uh, hopefully refined after our feedback, uh, the source code of the prototype that you are going to develop towards the end of the semester, plus an oral discussion. And this will be in another day with respect to the written test. Uh, both part, again, will be in presence, and uh, the, the only constraint here is that they must be passed in the same academic year, in any order. You can do the written test in what is February and the project evaluation in the same period or after, or the project evaluation in February and the written test in September, etc. The important thing is that we keep the, the score until the end of the session of September. So new academic year, new edition of this course, you lose your grade if you don't have both part, okay? This is the only constraint that you have. And you can do the written test, you don't like the grade, and you can say, we will, I will go the next time, and we will, you can also have a seat in the next time without any problem. Same, more or less same for the project evaluation, for the oral discussion. Uh, Oral discussion, what is? Uh, each group, and then I will speak a little bit more about the project, obviously, because it's something that will be, will, will cover most of the course. Uh, so oral discussion, what does it mean? It's not really urgent now, but it's something that you will need to know. To know. Uh, each group will present their project with three things. The first one is a brief introduction of the process, of the project. The second one, so what we are going to see in the next 10 minutes. Uh, then a demonstration. You're going to show us what you did. Um, and where you cover the main features and everybody in the team speak. So if you have a team of four people, all four people are expected to speak and cover something in the project. And then there is some question from us, two, three, typically, about your project. Not about anything in, in the course, just for your project. And when doing the oral discussion, you have to consider that we already have read all the deliverables and graded them at the time, and also had a look at the project code, so there is no need to repeat the content of the deliverable or ask to show the code, because we already have have a look at everything before the exam. Uh, of these three things, the most difficult, the most critical for your colleagues of the last years is the demonstration. So when it's time, prepare the demonstration. Decide what to show, in which order, who is going to speak, in which order, etc. Don't go there and say, oh yes, we are going to demonstrate something, but live, with a as, as we are inspired by the moment. Because typically it doesn't work, or doesn't work well. And this doesn't work well means you get a worse score than you could be, you could, you could have. So it, in the end, it's, it's worse for you. And also for us, that we are listening to something that is not really clear, but mainly for you. So the demonstration, we will uh, re-say this, later in the course is the most critical part of this discussion. Because the question you typically should, should be able to answer the question on your work. That should be easy. Uh, a brief introduction to say what is the work about. That too should be easy, a couple of minutes, nothing really complex, but showing the main feature, the most important parts that you want to highlight in your project, then that could be more, more difficult or more critical again. Um, okay, question up to this point? Yes.
So the question is, I'm repeating for, for the recording, the question is more or less, in, in a past course, that is web application one, um, you split the work, the coding work, among various members, and you were specialized, let's say, on one part more than the others, and so here, it's something that should be done the same way, or I need to know everything, right? Okay. Um, so here, it's a little bit more, uh, it's, it's a little bit different here, because the project is not all implementing. Let me say that we don't care too much about the, how you write code differently from web application one, where the goal was web technologies, React, uh, Express, database, whatever. Here, yes, we use technology to build the prototype, but we are more interested in the user interface, in the features that the application have, in the way you structure the forms, the, from a, a user perspective, from the, the utilizer, user, the, the people that use your application more than, oh, you write this three line of code and the other one wrote these other three lines that they don't, don't know who, who did what, okay? So this is more about the project I, per se than not the code. You will have to, to submit the code and it should be de decent, not good, not great, decent at least, uh, but you will not get you know, a lot of points about the, the code because the focus is not here. The focus is on other aspects here. In web application, instead, you got all the score that you had for the code that you develop, right? Uh, but I will, we will cover the project in a while. Any other question? No. Okay, material. In addition to the material that it's on the website uh, and so on, um, let me say that there isn't, uh, there is not a book that cover everything that we are going to do in this course, uh, because we take some pieces from one book and then something else to another because they cover different aspects. Um, but here in these slides, we are just reporting a few books, uh, suggested books. Um, both, let's say, academical, like these two here. These are five centimeter wide book. They are important book, let's say. Uh, they are also historical. So these, all these people here are expert in human-computer interaction, especially in the United States, but they are expert in human-computer interaction. So these are two of the books. You, you don't have to buy or get them. If you want, it's something more, but it's not required, okay? So slides and material that we are going to provide is more than enough for everything. Uh, but we are going to mention these in the slides sometimes, so like, oh, this part is get from the human-computer interaction book on, of uh, Dix uh, et, et al., that is the first one, with this hand, uh, blue, pi blue, blue picture, mm -hmm. or, the, the, or this is taken from Schneiderman, that is the black book, but it's something that we take from that. So no need to, if you don't want to have them, no need. These are other two books, that could be useful, that could be useful in general, that go depth in some part that we don't and cover some part that we don't because it's six credits, not 17, nor 60, uh, and so on. So there are things that are not covered here, obviously. And, and these four are the four, four let's say, more academic, part, more academic books. Are, these are instead more... Um, not academic, you can read them, but they're a book for, for reading, let's say in the free time. Um, the, the first one is the, the Design of Everyday Things. It is a classical book of the 80, 1980, and it was revised a few years ago. In Italian, it's called La Caffettiera del Masochista. You can imagine why. What happens when you, this is a pot for, for coffee. What, what, what's the, the effects of of drinking coffee from that, that you will get coffee on the hand, for sure, because it's designed that way. It, it works, it makes coffee, or whatever it makes, but it's, it's used, it's usable, it's used, it's usable, you can grasp, etc. but it's not really 
usable in another sense, in the sense that you cannot really drink coffee uh, in, except on your end, obviously. Um, and the other one is don't make me think, um, a common sense approach to web and mobile usability that is with pictures and is a, a nice uh, book for this uh, Steve, Steve Krug um, that is about usability on the web, only on the web. Um, also this uh, quite old book revised a few years ago. These are more light as a book. The, the second one especially, a lot of picture, a lot of examples, very nice. The other one is more um, important as a book. Not, it's not an academic book for, for course, but it's still an important book. Uh, you have to read a lot of this person. And we, we will mention Don Norman a lot of time uh, during the course for various other things, not for, for just this book. Okay, and these are the two teachers that you already know. Uh, so, again, books uh, are there. If you want, you can have a look at those. Uh, again, it's not really needed and um, required for the course. So, course project. We will cover, we will end this lecture with this course project. This is in part for the exam and in part for the actual work that you are going to do, again, starting from now. But maybe not now, but in tomorrow, let's say. Um, Oh, one thing about the lab. I, we also brought this on, on, on Slack. So you know where Labinf is? Yes, somebody say yes. Who don't know where Labinf is? Don't be shy, raise your hand. Okay, so Labinf is, is a physical room, okay? Um, that is um, in the first floor, of the Department of Computer Engineer. So in the, the building, they go across the street. In the first floor, on the side of this part of, of Politecnico. So close to Mixto, the bar, the cafeteria, there is this, the, the, the labine for the first floor. In the building, they go across the street. Okay, and this is the, the easy part. Uh, the complex part is how to access to labine because it's in a re really, uh, sad place in this moment, uh, because the typical access, and you maybe know, is from the ground, the ground level, you get um, a lift or a stair and you go to the labinth. Here on this side of, of the street in Corso Castelfidardo, and this is the typical entrance that is closed. Um, the Polytechnico is thinking to open that, but while Polytechnico is thinking, uh, we have the lab on Thursday, uh, and the thinking process is not end before Thursday, probably, um, because they need to put a person for checking the green pass, the temperature, and then uh, there is the department, so also for uh, teachers, they have to, to badge with the, 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 the smart card every day, etc. so it's more complex to open that, that door. And they didn't know, obviously, that le lecture started yesterday, which is a surprise. Um, but, uh, so given that this entrance is currently closed, uh, but they plan to open at a certain point. In the meantime, uh, to access the Labinf, you have to enter uh, in Corso Castelfidardo from the, on the side of the sec secretary, right? To, to like to go in the, in, in the rest of the Politecnico, the room one, two, three, etc., and then go up to the second floor because there is no first floor that is connecting with the, the lab. So on the second floor and wait as because there is a door that is closed, obviously, and wait as uh, one of us that is going to to you and say, okay, we can go to the lab uh, every Thursday up until they open this this door. Uh, so for this Thursday, the first slot of people that need to go to the Labinf will start from here with Professor Corno. So you end the, the lecture here, and the first group will move through the to the street, to the entrance, up to the second floor, moving all the research lab, and then back to the first floor, and then eventually in the Labinf. Uh, the second group will meet with me, probably, at those doors, um, 
at five minutes, 10 minutes before the start of the, of the lab. So let's say uh, 11.20, 11.25 in the morning, in front of those doors. There are orange door with Britain on the second floor. So if you took the lift, you enter the building, you took the lift, there are the coffee machine after the, the, when you go out of the elevator, there are coffee machine on the right. Um, you, you move on the right and then you see two orange door open with written Darwin, Department of Computer and Control Engineering, and you stop there. And someone will came uh, rescue you and bring you to, to the lab. Hmm? This is, and uh, same things for going out. You cannot leave before because there are door closed, obviously. Um, so until they not, don't open the, the door, the ground floor, we need to, to do this trip every time. So for sure, it's really difficult that they will open the, the door by this Thursday. I hope that they will for next week, but we will keep you posted on Slack on the updates of the, of the entrance for Labyrinth. Hmm? But for now, next, this, this Thursday, the first group will go with Professor Cornon and will leave probably with me from the same path, and the, the other group will need to go there 11.25, 11.20, more or less, and wait for me that I will probably bring the first group out and you in. And if you didn't book yet for the lab, I don't remember if I already said this, but if you didn't book yet for a slot, in, a place in the lab, um, we have quite a lot of people in the first slot, so please book on the second slot, or come on the second slot so that the groups are more balanced hmm, right now. Then again, when we will have groups we will try to, to have choose lots more balanced as possible. Also considering your preferences. So, close parenthesis. Um, so, project. We are speaking about this yellowish thing here in the slide. Uh, not about oral discussion, we already covered that, but what is this project? You have to code, and you have to know the code of the other person or not? So. Again, what is the goal here? This will be a semester-long project, or there will be many semester-long projects. And again, the goal is to give you hands on experience on the human-centered design process that we are going to explain to you during the classes. Because one thing is saying, okay, these are interviews, and interviews are done in this way. Another thing is, okay, now you have to do interviews for real, with real people, and get the answer and understand which question I ask. So it's something different, listening to us and then doing the actual work behind this. Then obviously the process will be bigger than the one that we are going to, that you are going to experiment. We are selecting a subset of everything because you cannot try, it. in the real world, you don't do everything, you choose which methods and which technique you use for each step, and we are going this choice for you, um, so that you, have, you know where to start, uh, but this will be the process. And this experience will be applied to serve a specific population. So you are not going to develop something for everybody, who is everybody, but you're going to develop something for elementary students, for elderly people running uh, in the park, for expert trainers, for waiters that needs to find a job. So a specific population that you choose, this is the part of the project-based approach, you choose which is the population, and you choose which is the, the context in which you want to investigate this population. And eventually, in the end, also build this interactive code-based prototype. And this is a prototype. We are going to ask you to use web technologies only. But this is a prototype, uh, meaning that it's done with web technology, but it can resemble a mobile application. It can look like a mobile application, not fully featured, because it's a prototype, but you can think 
of it for a, a smartphone, so you can do it in the right, let's say, the right dimension hmm, to fit a smartphone screen. You can imagine it for a smartwatch. You can imagine it for a desktop computer. You can imagine it for everything. It's just done using web technologies. But it's a prototype of an idea. Hmm? Um, well, I already said this. A project will be step by step, and mostly during lab hour and deliverables. We will have four deliverables. Um, three during the course, one before the exam. Uh, that is each step of the process, more or less, more or less each step of the project, of the process. Projects, group of four people. Try to do four people. Three people is acceptable if you cannot do four. Can it do two people, five people, six people, any other number people? The answer is no. Four people. If you cannot, three. If you have two groups of two people, that is a wonderful one group of four people. And if you are in three and there is one person that is without a group, we will probably try to put together the group for four. So try to be a four people group. So groups of four people, four students, the topic is proposed by the group. We will have some goals, some constraint, and I will show you how to propose the topic and how to structure the topic. Um, again, deliverable, evaluated at the exam. Sorry if I'm repeating this for, I don't know, many times, but it's something that typically came up at a certain point, but we, you, you don't give us a grade for this? No. The grading for the deliverables is at the exam before you get feedback hmm? to improve that work, also for the next deliverable, because most deliverables are actually interconnected. So doing bad one will compromise the next one and will compromise the, 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 the next one and etc. So if you try to do good work, it's better for the entire process. Uh, then the final presentation of all the project is at the exam, already said. Criteria for the project, for evaluating the project are listed there. Don't let me read that all. But it, the idea is that you should do something that is sounded, reasonable, together with individual contribution, clear and be able to explain it in a clear way to us that are not in your mind, just to be clear, and we are just reading the document you are providing to us. If something is not written there, we cannot know. Uh, and this again, this happened in the past. Ah, I thought this, yes, but you don't write that, so it's... It's good that you fought, but if you also wrote that, it's better for you, because we can read, actually, what you wrote, and et cetera. Uh, team composition, again, for people. It's your responsibility to form team. We don't want to, we don't generate teams for you. And we put, uh, we try to put people in the center since the beginning, also for this. Um, we can help if you need help or finding a group, or we have a group with just two people and you need two other people. We can, we can help you speaking with other people, but we are not going to assign groups for you. And this wasn't a problem in the last two years, so I hope that this positive trend of group formation without issue will continue also this year. Uh, if you need to shop for members or for teams, maybe you are in three and there is another person that is looking for a team, you can use the classes after, the labs for sure, and also Slack for shopping for, for a member. So in discussion, somebody say, we, we are in two and we are looking for two other people. And then you put in connection and you start speaking. And if you like each other, you can form a group. If not, next one, okay? But in the end, you should have groups of four people. We should have here groups of four people, here and remotely if somebody is not here in this moment. Uh, teams cannot be changed during the semester. After the semester, you can do whatever you want, but during the semester, for this course, once you have a team, it's for the semester, it's for the course. It's not forever, because you can change after, but it's for the course. Um, and I, I was saying before, each team will have two repositories on GitHub, private for the team, so that only the team 
uh, read the actual content and can work in this repository. We are going to create repositories for you, for the group, once the group is, is set up. Um, why two repositories? Because one is for deliverables, and the other one is for the code. So we have two separate repositories for that reason. Uh, what is a project? Again, it's a prototype application in which you should choose the topic. We only have a constraint about it must be realized with web technologies. Most of you have done a web application one in Italia or in English with me, with Professor Corno, with Professor Masala, and the other one can help the group in other way or learn a little bit of web technology to, to actually do the prototype. Uh, and again, it's a prototype. It can mimic a mobile application, a wearable application, a kiosk application, a smart TV application, whatever. Just enlarge the screen and plan the interaction consequently. If you have mouse, you will have maybe a smaller button than touch screen that will be larger, for instance. Uh, constraint, th these are not really constraint. Uh, you are free to choose the target user population as I said before, also the domain, and also one more target device for this prototype. And project should be something uh, that you should be comfortable to show up uh, at your, let's say, extended family to avoid things um, that will get, uh, in Italian, they will have a red bullet, red point in the, in the TV movies, the red films, no. It is for, for children, for the general population that you are comfortable to, to show to your family without embarrassing yourself. Um, milestones and uh, checkpoints, again, will have a strict deadline, will be evaluated as part of the exam, at the exam, not before. They will follow the lab content. Basically, one lab will start the deliverable, and then the next one will be the, con the prosecution of that, and then at a certain point there is another lab that will start a new deliverable, and so on. Uh, during the lab, you can obviously ask for advice, for feedback. We are there. We have a doubt. We would like to do this. What do you think? Again, it's one of the moments I was saying before in which you can ask for feedback. Um, that is different from the feedback that we are going to provide you after the submission of the deliverable. This is automatic. Uh, milestone will be markdown documents, so text, plus some picture, some time. Uh, that will be in the group repository on GitHub. And they will follow a template that we are going to, to provide you. That is a very simple template. It's basically a title and three lines that say, here you have to write this thing. Not, not a lot structured. Um, again, the evaluation, the feedback, we are going to give you feedback for each milestone through an issue on GitHub. We are going to open an issue to each group for each deliverable and writing, it's fine, go ahead, it's problematic, fix this and go ahead. It's terrible with the taste of what means terrible, obviously, and fix that and then proceed or at least fix now the most important things and then the minor one for the exam. Uh, hopefully this third category will not happen frequently. Uh, and for this feedback, you can have discussion time on the following week. Could be the lab, could be office hour, could be any other moment that you prefer. Uh, these are the four milestones. The first one will be in week um, five. That is the project description and need finding. So two pieces together. Uh, three weeks later, storyboard, paper prototype, and heuristic evaluation. And if you don't know what this means, it's fine. We will, you will discover it. Uh, week 10, wireframe of a part of that prototype. And av in, after week three, only that point, hmm, so the course is more or less 13, 14 weeks. So after week 10, you will start coding. No programming until week 10. We don't want to listen to, I would like to do is an, an application. I would like to do a mobile application uh, with JavaScript, with PHP. Until week 10, we don't know what this thing we are 
ignorant on all technology. In week 10, magically, we will start knowing everything and we can help. But up to the point, we don't want to, to listen about technology. Um, and then there is a milestone four that is one week, one week before the exam. The exam in which you are going to present your project. So let's say it's 15 of February, the first session, one week before. If you want to, to give the, the oral examination on the project presentation in September, is one week before that date in September. We will publish the right date as soon as we have these dates for the exam during the semester. And milestone four will be the user evaluation. That is the only one for which you won't receive a feedback because it's outside the course. It's one week before the exam, so it's, it's outside the course. For the other three milestones, you will receive a feedback instead. Uh, the final prototype after week three, before the user evaluation, the things that you have to, to develop, again, is a web technology for the front end, whatever you want, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, whatever. For the server side, uh, should connect to either existing APIs or, and or, have your own server. You need your own server basically for data storage because your application should show at least realistic data. If you're doing an application for trains, it should look like a real application for train, not with lorem ipsum or similar sentence or random sentence interpretation, but with realistic at least, not real, not in real time, but let look like a realistic data. So you need a database for storing that and a server to expose this to the front end. You can obviously use the web development skill that you acquired in the past. We already mentioned the web application one. And uh, it should be decent. So follow the best practice that you know from web application and also from software engineering that some of you, if not all, are following now in the semester, I think, right? Is software engineering now? Yes. Speak. Two, also two, no, one, one, let's, last year, okay. So you already did software engineering, so you already know a lot of things about software. Uh, the project completion level, what does mean a prototype? The, the, the final thing that you are going to demonstrate will be what is called a high fidelity prototype. It's high fidelity means that it looks like a real thing, but it's not the final product. So the application, this is similar to web application one, but more than this, does not require, does not need to have all the standards, yet important part, like the login, the registration of the user, etc., the search for some application. So all the standard features that are important in general, but is not focalized for your own specific application, they have to be skipped, they must be skipped. Don't waste time doing the login, unless your application is all about a new amazing a new login phase procedure that is totally different from the history of a login application right now. But that is difficult that you are come up with a project in that way. Uh, so focus on the thing that help you to demonstrate your goal, your project. And in addition to these four milestones, we can introduce the milestone zero. Uh, that is basically the group composition and the project idea. There is something to do quickly. That's why uh, I was saying you start now. Uh, because it's to do by October 7, so next week, next Thursday, uh, all these deadlines are and will be end of the day. So we are not going to say, okay, this is done by that hour because it's end of the day. So by the end of October, 23.59.59, etc. Uh, you have to submit the group composition and the project idea to that Google form. Uh, group composition and project idea means a project slash group title. Something that will end up in your GitHub repository as a name of the GitHub repository, as a name of the group. 
So don't write uh, three sentences as a title, short. Uh, the project idea with some of the things that I'm going to show you now, the group, who is in the group. Hmm? So uh, the ID, the student ID, matricula, your name, your GitHub username, because we need to uh, generate groups for you, uh, repositories for you, and so we need your GitHub username. If you don't have one, create one, possibly without the matricula in the name of the, of, of the username so that you can reuse it in the future. And one email, it could be also the studenti.polito.it email, one email that you may or may, will likely read. We are not going to use the email, but because there is luck, but if for any problem, we can rely on that email. And also, we are going to ask you in that form, your preferred slot in Labinth. So do you prefer to come in the first slot, in the second slot, or you don't care? You, every group can say, I would prefer in the first one, I would prefer in the second, I have no preferences. And then starting from that, we will try to put all the teams that choose the first lot in the, in the first one, and et cetera. Trying again to balancing teams in the two groups of Labinth. Uh, so here the easy, easy part are the, pre the preferred slot and the group composition, because you, uh, at a certain point, you will know the name of all these people. About the project topic, this is the most critical part because we ask you to submit this information, because you submit this information, we read that and we give you feedback. And this feedback typically is in this form. Um, we will say, okay, your project idea is great, go ahead. You can start with the, the milestone number one, basically, working in the next lab. Your project needs to be revised, because it's not good, it's not ready. Your idea is not ready, or is not clear. So this revision could be minor, and you can, again, proceed. But applying these changes, or major, and then you have to probably resubmit another proposal that we are going to reconsider. Um, because if this is working, all the rest is working. If this is not clear, and it's not working, you cannot really proceed in a good way. And the third, the, the third, yes, the third option is try again. So your idea is, I don't want to say it's bad, but in this moment, in that context, it's not working, so think something else. And a group can also submit more than one idea, it's not a problem. And then if you have one that is better than the other, you can pick the, the, the best one that we, we provide to you. So, Project idea. Why, uh, here, this is probably the most structured part of all deliverables or milestone, because that your, or your colleague at least, um, starting point when we ask about a project idea is, oh yeah, I would like to do a mobile application for uh, booking slots in the room. That is not what we need here, because you already identified in that way a specific need. You need to book a, a room in this, in a spot in a room for students. So the target population, students may work, but the, the idea is not good because you already have done the work. You already said that it's a mobile application and you already had the main feature in mind. So instead, and then while this could be good or could be correct for you as a student, uh, this may be totally wrong for other people or other, another population that is not stu university student. So we know not to know anything, more or less. So we don't know in this moment the user needs. We don't know which are the features. We don't know the requirements of, all, of our hypothetical application. This is something that probably never happened to you in the, in the course in the past. Because typically, also web application one, you receive the list of features that you have to implement. And you've done that. Uh, here instead, we are asking you, think about an area 
in which you want to investigate more to understand which are the most important need of the area. And that could be university student and lectures. But maybe the most important thing is booking a spot or maybe the most important thing is having something different on the teaching portal or having something different for eating or for the study rooms. Maybe it's not booking the slot. So we don't know in this moment. And this is why we will have this phase that will start also in the lecture next week and it's called the need finding because we need to find the needs. Uh, helping blind people access uh, Polito website uh, is, I will have some example, but is a little bit um, unspecified on the target population, which blind people? Students, probably, not all the blind people. Maybe not, maybe it's the parents of a student. So specify better that, and uh, access. Probably extend a little bit, but yes, could be something, because it's not a feature yet, is, uh, is there could be some problem there. Let's understand which are these problems. So using probably more the assets that is to give an idea of evaluating. And, but then if it's using uh, the, um, the website, maybe it's too large because the website is really big. It's for the teaching part, it's for the administrative part, it's for the uh, registration of, of a new students. Is we probably need to focus a little bit, but yeah, something like this. I have one an example here, and uh, I also put on GitHub four other example, reasoned example, I call it, because two are good and two are bad example, and I show you how to improve that, that example. So, uh, think about project in terms of which is the domain of the project, hmm? which is the target population of the project, and which context, like a broad hypothesis, you can help. And again, do not write a specific need, functionalities, task, technologies. This is something that will happen in the future. And we will ask you in the form to summarize in a sentence similar to the one that your colleague said before. That is this one. We would like to support, help, whatever. Who? The target population. To, while, in another proposition, and then the general activity. We would like to help blind students to do something in the Polytechnic website. So structure this. This is probably the only moment in which we ask you to structure something in a, this specific way. But this is helpful for you for understand and to summarize the idea also for us to evaluate in a way this. So this is an example. So the domain could be at my home, co cooking service for cooks, professional or not. So people that came to my home and cook. This is domain. No task, no, no specific feature of application. We don't even speak about application. Uh, the target population. Users that will go to other user home and cook for them. So we are speaking about it's something for the cook. It's not something for me receiving the cooks. Possible context, what can be done here? It could be something about the reservation. It could be something about matching between the user and the cook with some criteria. It could be about selecting recipe. It could be about pro procuring ingredients, shopping for ingredients. And all of these are possible contexts that you can list. This is just two examples, but could, you can write more, three, four of that. Just to have a broader idea of the domain that you are investigating. And obviously it should be something, probably should be something that could be transformed in, in an application, a system that you can eventually realize. So uh, if you want to do something for the astronauts on Mars, maybe it's something that you, or you know astronauts that are living for Mars, or it's something that probably it's difficult for you to, to reach out. Same things with blind students, you have to know some blind people. Because at a certain point, you will have to speak with these people. So 
not uh, an app for looking up a recipe, a social network of cooks, uh, an intelligent brewing machine for personalized coffee making. That sounds like buzzword. Uh, neither selecting the grams neither for each ingredient in the context, or filtering a recipe, or finding uh, recipes mm, on the database, or buying ingredients online. These are already tasks, these are already features, specific features, already identified features. Who knows if it's online or not online? It's a guess that you make, but maybe it's wrong as a guess. Hmm? So in the form, we will ask you these three things, the project idea in that format, the target population, the general activity, and you can write the sentence, we would like to support a chef that will cook at other people's home to better manage and deal with people's needs and expectations. And then better specify in the target population field, which is who are this chef that will cook at other people's home, like user that will go to other people's home and cook for them, be they professional chef or not. So better spe well specify a population and some general activities like improving the home cooking service, managing user expectation in one or more moment, like reservation, like user cook matching, and or so a set of possible hypotheses. Because after that, in the coming weeks, you will need to speak with this chef going, doing this service and understand which, which are the current problem or the current issues or the current uh, point of difficulties that they have, or something that they would like to have, but is tricky in this moment to do, and then operate on that. And so this is just the starting point for having an idea. And on this website I was saying before, on GitHub in this page, it's just document, I put other four examples. Uh, two of them uh, are called OK, that means that they were, they are actual projects from the past editions of this course. Uh, two of them are, all, all four end up to be projects. Uh, and successful project in a way, at least for the course. Uh, two of them are marked with OK. That means that the proposal is already good, but for each of them specify why it's good. So what is the, the important things in that, in that three lines that is good. And, uh, um, how can be improved. Even if it's already okay, maybe there are some minor points to be improved. And then there are other two examples that are marked with refine, uh, in which you find the project idea with the target population and activity, plus what is good in that specific project idea that is already problematic, but something is already good there. What is not good? What needs to be improved? Non can, it needs to be improved. And finally, the version of the same proposal improved. And so you see before and after. And this for example three and example four in this document. So this is another example for, for you, other four example for you to reason about this thing. So this form, not this. This form is due Next Thursday, end of the day, uh, you will have, for sure, Slack for form team and start speaking. You will have the lab hour, also this lab hour, this on Thursday, lab hours to, to do the lab work that is already online, but also for this. And we will also have the hour next week lab for finalizing this in the lab. So during the lab, groups can finalize this form and then submit. Okay, any question? Okay, then see you on Thursday and have a nice day.